Welcome back everyone. In this video, we got to graph these two functions here. So starting off with this one, we got y is equal to 3 over x minus 1 plus 2. So notice that the parent function for this is 1 over x, the reciprocal function, and it's been transformed. And in general, the format for a transform reciprocal function looks like that. That's where the a, k, d, and c values are. So for this function, easy to tell, what's the a value? Well, it's this numerator here, 3. Now, sometimes this a value can also be in front, so we could have this 3 over here instead, and this would be like a 1, right? That would be the same thing. But uh, either way, a value is 3 in this case. k value, there's like a 1 in front there. So k value is just 1. What's the d value? It's this positive 1, right? It's always the opposite sign when you're dealing with the d value. Then the c value is 2. Okay, so now we're going to take the parent function, 1 over x. We're going to take its table of values. So multiple points you could use. I usually use these points. Um, then we'll have 0 0.5, 1, and 2. Then this ends up being negative 0.5, negative 1, negative 2. This ends up being undefined, right? If you remember, that's a vertical asymptote. And then this is 2, 1, 0, 0.5. Okay, so we're going to be transforming this table. So we're going to take all the x values, divide them by k, which is 1. So the x values are just going to be left as is, plus that d value of 1. And then the formula for the y values is a y plus c. So we're going to take all the y values, multiply them by 3, add 2. All right, so all the x values, we're simply just adding 1. So negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. This would give us 0. This would give us 0 0.5. This would be 1. Uh, this would be 1.5, this would be 2, and then this would be um, 3, like that. I think that works, okay? And then um, all of the y values, we're going to multiply by 3 and then add 2. So negative 0.5 times 3 gives us negative 1.5 plus 2 gives us negative, or, uh, positive 0.5. Zero times three, or uh, sorry, negative one times three gives us negative three plus two gives us uh, negative one. Negative two times three, negative six plus two gives us negative four. And then undefined, this is undefined as well. And then two times three, six, that would give us eight. And then 1 times 3 plus 2 gives us 5. And then uh, 0.5 times 3 gives us 1.5 plus 2 gives us uh, 3.5. Like that. Okay, so we took these points and we just simply transformed them. So now we can graph these points. Um, I'm going to graph it over here just to save myself some room. Now, if you remember with a reciprocal function, what I told you is the d value, if it's been transformed, that's always going to be the vertical asymptote. And then the c value is always going to be the horizontal asymptote. You could actually tell from the table the vertical asymptote is 1 because at an x value of 1, it is undefined. The y value is undefined. So that there represents the vertical asymptote. So before I plot the points, what I like to do is I always like to first plot the vertical asymptote. So at an x value of 1, put a dotted line there. And then I like to plot the horizontal asymptote. So that's at a y value of 2. And then it just gives me a context to which put these points under. So now I could just plot these. So negative 1 and 0 0.5, that would be what? That would be like, um, I'd say, 
here, let's say. And then we would have zero and negative one, which would be like down here. And then 0 0.5, negative four, which would be like over here. Then 1.5 and eight, that would be like up here. Uh, two and five, that's like over here. And then three and 3.5, that's like over here. Right, so not necessarily to scale. You may want to um, label these points as well. So you may want to actually write, you know, negative one and 0 0.5, label this point, this point, et cetera, et cetera. I just didn't do it because my graph is not too big. So it might just uh, obstruct the view. But this is how your, um, your graph should look like. This is the transform table. This is the graph. And remember, d value for a reciprocal function, it's always the vertical asymptote. C value is a horizontal asymptote. So before you plot any points, always plot those asymptotes based on the d and c value. OK, moving on to this function. Now, this function, notice that the parent function is root x. And if we transform root x, it's always in what form? It's always in this form. OK, so what we have to do is we have to actually have to rearrange this. So if you see 2 minus x, you want to actually re re uh, rearrange it so the x is in front. So 2 minus x is the same as negative x plus 2. And then notice that there's a negative 1 attached in front of the x. So you actually want to rewrite this as negative bracket x minus 2. And then this here will be plus 4. Right? And now it's easy to see what are the transformation values. So the a value is negative 1 half. The k value is negative 1. The d value is 2. And the c value is 4. So we're going to take um, the parent function root x which has point 0, 1, 2, or uh, 0, 1, 4, rather, and 9. So this would be 0, 1, 2, 3. And we're going to transform it with these transformation values using the transformation formula. So we're going to take all the x values, divide them by negative 1, the k value, and then we're going to add 2. All the y values are going to multiply by a half, and we're going to add 4. So 0 divided by negative 1, 0 plus 2 gives us 2. 1 divided by negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 gives us positive 1. 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4 plus 2 gives us negative 2. 9 divided by negative 1 plus 2 gives us negative 7. This would be 0 plus 4, which is 4. Uh, 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half plus 4 is um, 3.5. And then 2 times negative 1 half, negative 1 plus 4 gives us 3. 3 times negative 1 half, negative um, 1.5 plus 4 gives us 2.5, I believe. Yeah, that works. All right, so now, right here, these are the parent uh, or the uh, transformed uh, points of this function. So this here was like the vertex for uh, root x. So we know that this here is going to be the vertex as well. So 2 and 4, so if we take this and we plot it, 2 and 4 is going to be up here. Then we'll have 1 and 3.5, which is over here. Negative 2 and 3, which is over here. And then negative 7 and 2.5, which is like over here. So this looks like that. So you got 2 and 4. We got 1 and 3.5. We got uh, negative 2 and 3. And then this here, this point is negative 7 and 2.5. All 
right? So that's how the transform function looks. That's how this function looks. So we took root x, transformed it, then we just plotted those points.